Like I said, there's good reason for the Mahindra Thar, this iconic off-roader, to be there on deck today. That's why we're off-roading in the middle of nowhere. That's because Mahindra has come up with a Thar NFT. Now, it's fascinating to see one of the country's top automotive companies take a brand like this and bring it into the NFT space. So, that piqued our interest and that's why I spoke to the team that made it happen. Have a look. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us on Tech Today. Harish, I'd like to start off by asking you all about the Thar. Now, this is a cult favourite for so many of us off-roading enthusiasts, but its charm really comes from being rudimentary. It's the OG off-roader. So, what was the genesis of actually tokenizing something as iconic and classic as the Thar and really making it an NFT? Firstly, Ayush, it's a pleasure to be on your show and thanks for having us over. Uh, See, when we started off the concept of the Thar, yes, our off-roaders were built earlier, you know, to go where there were no roads, to go into uncharted territories. And that is in our DNA. But if you see the all-new Thar, we have combined the go-anywhere attitude of the Thar with, you know, features and functionalities like comfort and sophistication, etc. So it's a mix of both the worlds. And anyway, what, what, we, what we hope to do or what we aim to do is to take our authentic SUV positioning uh, with the brand, you know, promise of explore the impossible into new and uncharted territories. Uh, last year, when we started with the, the you know, with, with marketing of all of our new launches, we, we stated that we will be a digital first organization. And in that transition to a digital first organization, we see the NFTs as a completely exciting and a new and exciting platform to push the boundaries of, you know, explore the impossible. And as you as you mentioned, the Thar exemplifies that Mahindra promise. And if you add to that, it's larger than life imagery. Uh, you know, people are the 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 fans of Thar and the, the loyalists of Thar and the owners of Thar absolutely love and are in love with the vehicle. And this larger than life imagery is we thought is best suited to be the first from an auto you know, OEM to go into this socially wired landscape of NFTs. Now, the Thar NFT auction ended last week. What was the response like? Were you happy with the outcome? See, we had two, uh, you know, aims with this. One was to enter this space and of NFTs and, you know, maybe get into it and learn as we go. The second, which is very close to our heart, is that all the proceeds of the sale were to go to Nanikali. And that is something that is absolutely brilliant that we do as an organization you know you know supporting the underprivileged girl child uh, and providing education and other you know support so i think it was it was one it was it was something to do with the brand as well as it was close to our heart and we are absolutely stoked with the kind of response that we got if you even see the kind of comments that you know people and our fans gave hugely positive Everyone appreciated the fact that we were in the world of NFTs. They appreciated the NFTs per se and the concept that we had developed. And they were very positive about uh, Nani Kali and what we were doing on, on that front. Uh, over the period of the, you know, the bid, I think we closed at a total of 26 lakhs for the four NFTs. And, and given the comparison that we had studied, we had studied a lot of other NFTs that happened in the market, both in India and outside of India. And given the value that we got, I thought that it was it was brilliant in terms of you know our first foray. Interesting. Rajesh, we're going to get our geek mode on and there's a lot of auto and tech geeks watching tech today and we love to geek it out. So given that you worked on the tech side of this foray into NFTs and Tech M played a very active role in the whole process, it would be nice to really understand what sort of synergies and collaborative spirit were required across such a large group like the Mahindra Group. How important is it to have that sort of synergistic culture across such a large group? Was it easy to pull this off? Yeah, thank you, Aish. Thanks for having me on the show. Very interesting question from your perspective. A large group like Mahindra with so many uh, entities in the group, it becomes a little bit difficult from a coordination and a synchronization perspective. But we have an interesting initiative going on called as Mahindra One. Under the ages of Mahindra One, we fairly work as uh, one team with the same dream. So we basically see it as one particular entity. From that perspective, it has been uh, pretty easy from a coordination 
and implementation perspective right from uh, conceptualization to roll out of this particular uh, service and this is not the only area where we have this uh, collaboration going on we have collaboration on multiple fronts whether it is cyber security whether it is infrastructure services whether it is uh, leveraging cloud services there are many many collaborations that are uh, going on currently between uh, the wider mahindra group as well as uh, tech mahindra to reiterate that at the end we are one mahindra that is just because we got to get our geek mode on on tech today there's a lot of auto and tech geeks who tune into the show so right. just understanding what it was like from a tech perspective to really come up with something like this right a while ago we were doing this huge crypto panel and we were talking right. to a lot of legacy companies as well trying right. to understand what it's like to modernize things and really enter well the blockchain world or the metaverse web 3.0 as we like to call it in, right. in that sense like we're talking about a big group like mahindra a very established reputed group what was it like modernizing this sort of a system and really you know spreading awareness about how this is going to work and how did well the tech implementation work when it came to actually making the mahindra thar an nft sure ayush in, in fact uh, we had many uncharted territories that we had to go into one is from the brand perspective per se as uh, harish had uh, mentioned explore the impossible uh, we literally took that particular explore the impossible on the tech side as well and why do i say that is from two perspectives one is in terms of the existing protocol that is available in the marketplace which is uh, uh, de facto the gold standard which is the ethereum protocol and there have been some issues on the ethereum protocol from a scaling up from a transaction per second perspective the gas fees and also there is a little bit of uh, you know association with ethereum that it is energy intensive uh, protocol so something that we want to do it uh, for the good of the society and for the good of uh, the uh, those girls at nani kali we had to be extremely careful in terms of selecting a protocol which is completely aligned with our thought process so one we had selected a protocol which is polygon uh, very proud to say that it's a protocol that has been architected from india it's a layer 2 solution built on ethereum lot more efficient and lot more uh, less energy consuming protocol so we had to use that particular protocol polygon and then customize it from ground up to put together our nft marketplace number one number 2 the other challenge as you know most of the nfts the worldwide are sold in the cryptocurrencies so given the regulatory climate in india and also given the fact that it is an initiative from a legendary group like mahindra with 75 years of existence we didn't want to do something in the area of cryptos where the regulatory climate is not very clear so we had to set this entire uh, platform or the entire marketplace using the fiat currency now there are very few nft providers who have been able to architect the solution using the fiat currency so that's why i say explore the impossible both from the protocol perspective and also from uh, the payment perspective you know how do you set it up on an indian rupee uh, what happens in you you doing it using a crypto things work very easily number 1 you have smart contracts the smart contracts can be written and the money will be auto debited after a successful bid has been placed there is no intervention that needs to be done but with uh, indian wallets uh, those smart contract functionality is not optimal so we had to reinvent the processes to make it happen and at the end uh, i am of a firm believer that uh, you have a good cause to work on the solution will automatically fall in place and things get done harish rajesh what a pleasure to talk to you today on tech today i hope we continue to have these auto and tech geek huddles here on the show and we'll speak to you very soon and for all of you thanks so much for watching if you like the video do like comment share and subscribe